The other thing that happens is with these budgets, unfortunately, if by the end of the fiscal year you haven't used your budget, you lose it. Mm -hmm. Well, if I'm lobbying for a budget, it's hard work to compete with my compadres. And if I don't use it all, mm -hmm. I should be applauded for that. You yeah. haven't used up all your budget. Right. Great. Yeah, right. Guess what? You get to carry it forward. No. You should. Yeah. You should. Yeah, yeah. But no, what happens in reality is I lose it. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually penalized for that, believe it or not. Because next year, when I submit a budget, they're going to say, you know, last year you asked for two million, you only used about 1.3. We're not going to give you two again. Yeah. So that's actually the wrong behavior. But unfortunately, we're geared up that way through decades of this annual budgeting that is ingrained in most organizations. Mm -hmm. I have to stop you here because the old school version of budgeting doesn't really match. I'm going to build features until you tell me you've had enough features. And then once you tell me you've had enough features, I'll stop asking you for money. The, the, the budget really is like you're, you're buying features as they're developed. Yes. So that the the old school, I'll get a, I'll get a brick of money and I'll just, just whatever use it for the whole year or whatever. I mean, I guess that's cool if you if you, I guess that version of budgeting could be retrofitted in. I feel if you have a mature team and a mature product owner with a mature velocity that's predictable every time, and then your organization could know that my team in the last two years has produced X number of features and it's cost this much or whatever, so I know that I need a lot certain money. And you can kind of retrofit some in, but like, I can't even imagine you would ever be allowed to retrofit something in because you need to take a chance to figure out how to work this way before you can retrofit it in. It, it just, it, it makes no sense to me what you were describing coming up with your annual budget and sort of allotting it out or whatever, it seems like when you go to plug Agile into that, your Agile will now form itself into little mini waterfalls in order to fit the budgeting that's aligned with, rather than we're gonna give a budget of this and then we're going to get whatever features we get out of it at, at the end of that time. I, I don't know, is it, is it, do you need to change the organization to be more experimental in order for this to work out to be able to make that change? This seems like a much higher level than most people are exposed to, higher level, a, a much more senior level in the organization yeah. than many other people who are in Scrum Master or maybe in product owner roles are exposed to. That's why I bring it up. I'm, I'm very interested in this topic. You're absolutely right. It is at a higher level strategically, right? Yeah. It's in the organizational DNA as right. to how they do budgeting and right. it fundamentally requires a complete transformation in that. But it's very difficult because the traditional way of budgeting was never geared up around an agile delivery way. It was rather construed for hard things, like right. you produce this widget right. um, and you manufacture it. So it's gonna take you X number of weeks, months, or whatever to produce X or Y number of these widgets. Yeah. Well, software manufacturing is a little different, right? Especially when you don't have the scope that's bound in yeah. Agile. Yeah. So you have a budget that's fixed, right? We have a timeline that's fixed, but the scope flexes in Agile. So traditional way of budgeting really doesn't fit very well with this. And that's where people run afoul because they're looking at this saying, you know, here's some money, go make something happen. Uh -huh. And, but you don't know what you need yet because the features aren't defined to your point. So even though, let's say by some miracle, you managed to launch a product by that time within that budget, let's say, that's still a failure because you didn't de decide up front the features. Mm -hmm. So when you launch something, inevitably there are going to be features that aren't there. And so they're going to say, we used up the budget and these things aren't there. Mm -hmm. The whole thing is set up that way. Now, organizations that are succeeding in the agile delivery method are not using these traditional ways of budgeting. Yeah, They are actually starting from the ground up by looking at value streams and funding those, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's that's a valid angle because ultimately why are you spending money, right? You're spending money as an investment to either save costs or make money, mm -hmm. make profits. In either case, or in both cases, I should say, it is reasonable to be able to justify a value stream. If we spend X amount of money, then we expect to receive a revenue stream over this many months, years, whatever time frame it is. Yeah. So then you can look at that as a financial model and say, is it worthwhile us investing in this, yeah, right? Yeah. Figure out your net present value and all of these, these good things. So I think, you know, those organizations that are delivering software in an agile way are not using agile budgeting that is traditional in nature. What they're doing is they're using 
what I can only describe as micro-budgeting. 